Oftentimes when you're just starting out learning about Game Theory Optimal Poker, one of the things you're going to come across is the comparison between poker and something like Rock, Paper, Scissors, a very, very basic game you might teach to a five-year-old. Today I want to talk about what some of those big takeaways are, how you can actually utilize this comparison, and where it just completely breaks down. <music> Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit, and today I want to talk about rock, paper, scissors, and really how it compares to poker, even though these are two completely different strategy games. The big important takeaway is that both of them actually have a game tree kind of running in the background behind these games. However, it's important to understand that the game tree behind something like rock, paper, scissors is extremely, extremely simplified compared to something like poker, which can get extremely, extremely complex, especially when you're looking at solves from earlier street examples. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's start by talking about what rock, paper, scissors actually is, just in case you've been living under a rock. So rock, paper, scissors, or RPS is an extremely simple two-person game where each player is going to choose either rock or paper or scissors without letting their opponent know their selection beforehand. Then both players are going to reveal their selection at the same time, and the scoring table is extremely simple. Rock is going to beat scissors, scissors are going to beat paper, paper is going to beat rock, and if both players choose the exact same item, then the result is a tie. And it just so happens that RPS is an example of a solved game. So the game theory optimal strategy for rock, paper, scissors is to choose each option exactly one third of the time. Using the strategy, we'll always win exactly one third of our games and tie one third of our games in the long run. It does not matter how our opponent modifies their strategy. There's absolutely nothing our opponent can do to prevent us from winning exactly one third of our games utilizing this strategy. So given all of this, the GTO strategy for rock, paper, scissors ends up with neither player winning in the long run. The result is just going to be a perfect tie across the board. And poker is similar. When two perfect GTO poker players play heads up, the result is that neither player is going to make a profit in the long run. Did you know? To use game theory lingo, RPS is referred to as a strongly solved game since every aspect of the game is understood thoroughly. Specifically, a complete solution to the game is known. This should not come as a big surprise since the game itself is so basic. Poker, on the other hand, is not considered solve. The exception is Heads Up Limit Hold'em, which is considered weakly solved. But for a moment, imagine that our Rock, Paper, Scissors opponent was not particularly experienced and decided to choose Rock with 100% frequency. Every single time we play against them, they're going to choose Rock. If we continue with our GTO RPS strategy, our long-term results would still be a tie. But then we really should ask ourselves the question, is this our best strategic response in this situation? And at first glance, I'm sure you're thinking, no, why would I choose my decisions randomly one third of the time when I know my opponent is going to choose rock 100% of the time? Ideally, we would switch to choosing paper every single round if we knew our opponent was always going to pick rock. We would win 100% of our games this way but we would no longer be playing a game theory optimal strategy. Instead, we'd be implementing an exploitative strategy. And this is where you can see a real comparison to poker overall, where there is a massive opportunity to make more money by playing exploitative and taking advantage of mistakes that our opponents are making in their game. Because our opponents are not GTO perfect. They're just simply not. Humans can't implement it perfectly. No human can. Don't let them fool you. No matter how much they say it, it's just simply an impossibility for a human to do so. So you might be thinking, well, why bother with GTO poker at all? Well, the thing you have to keep in mind is that knowledge of GTO poker is extremely valuable because it allows us to recognize when and how our opponents are making errors. Further, GTO strategy provides a baseline from which we can deviate exploitatively, right? So let's say in a given situation, you're actually supposed to call down with your bluff catchers a pretty good chunk of the time. Well, that's great when you're playing against someone who's also bluffing a perfect amount of time, but let's just say that they're a nitty opponent and they really never ever bluff. Well, why would you continue calling with your bluff catchers at the exact same frequency? Same thing if you were the one in the betting position and your opponent is a very, very massive calling station fish who's never ever going to fold. Well, why would you continue bluffing against them? Just kind of remove your bluffs, play exploitatively, and take advantage of the fact that they're going to pay off your value hands lightly. And why bother bluffing when the bluffs are really never going to be successful? This is really where you can start to see that comparison between a basic game like RPS and something as complex as poker, even though, again, the game trees are vastly different. And there is one other important thing that comes up when comparing RPS and poker, and that is the scoring system. 
So in RPS, the winner is simply the person who wins the most number of rounds, since every round is valued the exact same. Either you win a point, you lose a point, or you tie and win zero points. This is not true in poker, right? A player who wins more hands doesn't necessarily win the overall game because different amounts of chips are wagered on each hand. The profitability of various decisions in poker is measured using EV or expected value. I'm not going to go into that in this video. I'll leave a link for that in the description box if you want to learn more about EV. But essentially, this is the way that we would think about decisions from a poker, pers poker perspective and also, again, why poker can be so much more complicated in the game tree compared to a very, very very basic game like RPS. So at the end of the day, the biggest takeaway is understanding the exploitative versus GTO approaches to a basic game like RPS, and then extrapolating that out to something that's more complicated, such as poker. Because even in poker, in the exploitative play has the potential to win more money than a game theory optimal strategy. But that's based upon the fact that an exploitative play is taking advantage of a mistake or a deviation that our opponent is making from the perfect GTO play. So we have to understand what the GTO approach is, and then we can start understanding how our opponents are actually breaking away from that, and then in turn, how we can then exploit them and take advantage and make more money by using exploitative strategies to take advantage of their breaks from GTO strategies. And if this is something you're interested in learning a lot more about, I would definitely suggest you pick up my brand new book, GTO Poker gems. It is going to go through tons more of this stuff and give you actionable insights from our years and years of GTO exploration and solver work. This is extremely valuable stuff and it's meant to be a concise breakdown rather than just use logging through endless hours of solver output. To learn more and pick up your copy today, just visit redchippoker.com slash gems. Again, redchippoker.com slash gems to pick up your copy of GTO gems today or always look on Amazon if you're looking for the paperback or Kindle version. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned a little bit. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. And of course, a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it would be massively appreciated. I look forward to seeing you back soon with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.